So, or was it planned that you were going to speak to us yesterday at 5 p.m.? No, it wasn't planned at all. It was in response to the um, controversy which had uh, arisen out of the misreporting and the misrepresentation of facts, yes. So, so the, we need to clarify this. Clarify the facts. So the, the reportage was that Achimota Forest had been sold and the clarification was that it had not been sold and that this was given back a portion of the land to the old family who had petitioned successive governments for it. Is this a summary of what happened yesterday? It's a brilliant summary. Good. But there are a couple of questions. So the people had petitioned President Kufo in 2008. They had also petitioned Mills oh. Mahama government. Um, some people are asking, why are we now giving it to them? We've been in power. You've been in power since when? 2017. So why now? Well, because uh, Bernard, the, it's, it's a process, and the process actually became, if you want, conclusive in 2013. In 2013, they were given a lease. They were given a lease, and the lease was plotted or registered in their name. Now, you, as a private citizen, if you go and acquire a, a plot of land, and you are given a lease. You don't need the concurrence or an act from the government in order to give effect to the lease, in order to enjoy the right arising out of that lease. You go straight to the Lands Commission, Land Title Registry, and you register your title, and you get title which is indivisible straight away. We have had to do this for the old family because in view of the 1927 uh, uh, Act, uh, Cap 157, which classified that broader area of land, that uh, a large area of land, if beyond the Achimota forest, as a, a forest reserve. If you don't amend that provision to degazette the portions which have been released to them, they will not be able to acquire title. They will not have absolute title for it. But even when we did that, we still put safeguard measures, checks and balances to ensure that the ecological integrity of the Achimota forest is not compromised. It's safeguarded. And we went as far as also enacting EI 154 for the avoidance of that to reaffirm that the Chimota Forest continued to be a forest there. But did, so, you question, yeah. did, you, did you question why in 2013 they were given it, given a lease? Because if, based on Article 20, if land belongs to me and it's not being used, it, land has been compulsorily acquired from me and the state is giving back to me, why isn't it giving back to me for freehold? Why the lease? Well, that's a legitimate question. Um, but in these matters, I was guided throughout the process by the Attorney General. And I, I, I'll tell you, when it began, I myself, I didn't really find my way clear when it, comes, when it came to the law. And some of the proposals I sent to the Attorney General, he reverted to me with a more one understanding and appreciation of the law and the procedure and how to go about it. And I have no doubt now that the advice the Attorney General gave and the, the processes we went through, even in terms of drafting the EI and all of that is the right procedure and 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 that is exactly what I'm sure I, you I, I was advised by that. I, I'm sure you repeat this answer for this question but let me ask it anyhow some people are so saying under article 265 you may have required parliamentary ratification for an agreement like this you chose the EI route why some people feel that yes it was originally taken by the governor in council but now you are in a constitution that's 92 constitution you are going to give land which is for government back to some people in some form of transaction did you not think we could have gone through the route of say a legislative instrument to bring parliament's involvement why an executive instrument oh, really when you um government deals in public land you need parliamentary approval parliamentary ratification well it says is there any transaction contract or undertaking involving a grant of right or concession on or behalf of any person body of persons however so described for the exploitation of any mineral, water, or any natural resource. You can say a forest reserve is a natural resource has to come through parliament. So I'm just prepared. I'm, I'm giving you that as an, a legal angle some people have given, if you've thought about that. I'm not sure about this. I'm not too sure about this at all. Um, uh, I'm not sure. We are not granting a concession here. No. We are not. We are... We are we are uh, releasing land to a family, and the dealing the dealing in public land is not uh, uh, 
subject to parliamentary ratification. In any event, the 1927 was an acquisition of land for purposes of developing it into a forest reserve. The part that is being released is not a forest reserve, and it's not a concession. Everything about this matter is land. You read the EI carefully. The subject matter of this transaction is land. But if it's not a forest reserve, why the need to reclassify it based on the EI? Well, when we say a forest reserve, I mean, for example, if you take University of Ghana, the EI that uh, acquired the land for University of Ghana's construction, that EI, the, the schedule uh, or the scope of the land, moves all the way into East Legon and other parts. I'm not too sure you tell me that North Legon is University of Ghana. It's not. If you take Kolebu, for example, Kolebu, the EI that acquired Kolebu, moves into places like Chopo and other places, so many other places around Kolebu. I'm not too sure today we will say that those places constitute a hospital. So it's the same um, logic here. Yeah, but, but anyway, with the legalities of it, I'm not even sure that we can settle it here. Those who are making that argument, let's see what that No, no problem. I was asking that... I mean, they can raise it formally with me or with any government outfit. I will refer to the Attorney General for his advice. In any event, he's a, he's a man on top of no, no, no. So the Attorney General is willing to speak on illegalities, no problem. The, the other question I have for you, and I thank you for your time, I know you've been busy this morning, that we are told that the agreement they had between the Owu family and the Kufa administration was for 90 acres. So how did we move from 90 to 361 acres? That was not concluded. You will see that that, that agreement was not concluded. And also you will see that the acreage moved from 90 to 180 something uh, in 2011 or so, and it went up in 2013, and it's, it's what it is today. There, there was a whole committee that sat on this matter and used time-tested um, professional variables and formulas to compute uh, these lands. And it is the same for all compensation. The Land Valuation Division of the Lands Commission has a formula by which they compute compensation. If it's in a form of money or in a form of land, that is to be uh, released to families. It's a very um, time-tested formula. And as minister, I don't even really uh, get involved in that. I just have to be satisfied that the work they've done is above board. And this committee did this work thoroughly, did it professionally, and, and did it over a period of time, came to this conclusion. And uh, the... the, the the, the issues of compensation, you know, then at 1927, somebody acquires your land in 1927, and you're having to be compensated um, in 2022. Um, uh, the variables change, you know. Value of land mm -hmm. then is different from value of land now. But those are matters we can continue to. But, but minister, just a quick one: if somebody has his land compulsorily acquired, and he wants compensation. And again, I'm asking this as a layman. Why do you give him back part of the land? I because initially, the 21 acquisition, you give them 4,000 pounds. So a compensation could be pecuniary. Why are they being given you land? Are, you are very adept at the uh, 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 matters to do with finance. And then I, but I'll take some time and, and do the, the extrapolation of the current value of 4,000 pounds of 1921. <laughs> it, it may help. But the point is that it's become fashionable these days that land rather is given in lieu of com compensation, you know, because of the quantums of money that we talk about when it comes to compensation. In fact, even we are having a lot of difficulties with compensation, monetary compensation, because when you look at it, it's simply not sustainable. And um, the, the volume of uh, applications or petitions before my desk for compensation across the country, across the length and breadth of this country, and the amount of money we are talking about the Ghanaian treasury will need three four times of all of our money to pay that kind of compensation so in many cases you want to find innovative ways of dealing with these matters you know without necessarily burdening the public exchequer yes okay but by the way what is the size of Achimota forest as we have it yeah I have to check but I think it's uh, 400 and 400 plus hectares I think really but I have to um, so. based on, sure. I see, because based on the demarcations we have seen on our own maps, and these are public maps, what is left of the Achimota Forest is around 363 hectares. 363 hectares. Okay, you may be right, actually. Good.
Now that trans that translates to eight hundred and eighty nine acres. Now the 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 schedule of the EI gives the the size of the area to be three sixty one acres. So essentially, you're giving forty point five percent of Achimota Forest back to the Owu family based on what I've just said. Let me just reiterate: three sixty three hectares is eight eighty nine acres. You are giving 361 acres of that. That's 40.5% of Achimota forest. That cannot be described as the periphery of the forest. We have to, um, you know, that that's uh, with the greatest of respect. That, that's um, uh, a bit simplistic because the original acquisition of 1927 was 479 hectares. You know that. That's the original acquisition. Part of which has been used for um, Gimpa, part of which has been used for um, Forest Commission headquarters, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm not too sure that uh, this uh, way of no, but okay, Minister. But even if it's whole, even if it's 479 let me, hectares, let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, go ahead. Let me finish. You know, I don't want to get into this mathematics because it can be misleading and it, it, it can be uh, done in a way that. Uh, you really don't have the hard facts and to be able to make a judgment. You know, what, what we have to really be asking ourselves is the, the area which is vegetated, which is forested. What is that area? I mean, that's really what you should be looking at. If you are saying that Timota Forest is 379, and it turns out that the vegetated area is 100 uh, hectares, and the rest of it is not vegetated, and it's built up already, and so on and so forth. That changes the calculus altogether. So that's why I say with the greatest of respect, it may be simplistic. No, ac- ac- actually, then, with, the, with, with all due respect, it's not because mathematics is more accurate than English. So that's why I am using numbers to say that describing what has been given to them as peripheral is actually less accurate, which is why I'm going to the numbers. The, e, the EI mentions that we are giving them 146 hectares. And I am saying based on even what you've said, that Achimota Forest, when it was originally acquired, was not up to 500 hectares. From the calculation we have, is 363 hectares. 146 hectares out of that is about 40%. So I, I'm, I put it to you that that is a very substantial part of the forest. That's two-fifths you of know, the forest. Don't let, me, don't, let me, don't let me quarrel with you with your mathematics. I mean, you hold on to that. What I do know is that the vegetated part of Achimota Forest is substantially protected. What the mathematics are and so on and so forth. We can take those up later. Because I don't want to get into, I don't have any figures in front of me here. So I don't want to get into a percentage of that and that and that. I'm not too sure that. But how did you convince yourself that what is being given out, what is left is still substantial for us then? If we can't use use the numbers. It's not about me convincing myself. The way officials of the Ghanaian state, the Forestry Commission and others, who did a very professional job, went and did surveying and so on and so forth, and made recommendations which, um, in their view, are unimpeachable. I mean, that, that is how government business is run. The way you are going about it is another way of going about it, which is taking figures and adding on and subtracting and so on and so forth. That's another matter. We can continue to interrogate yes, them. I myself, I will um, continue to refresh myself of, the processes okay on a, minister maybe what would have helped us is if the if the site plan was released because what we have is words describing the schedule and the coordinates given which we have used is there a site plan that you are prepared to share to show us the extent of the land and then the the size of the forest for so everybody can see that this is just the periphery of the forest i have to check with the second capital i have to but is this not germane to the discussion it may be. It may be. And if it, if it is and we have to share it, why not? We can do that. I actually think it is. Because it, it will probably clarify all the, the That's fears. What you think. No, because I, if, if you permit me, there were two issues I raised. First, I raised the issue of 90 acres becoming 360, which you then explained that over the years it's been changing. Then I'm raising the issue of 146 hectares out of 363 hectares, 40%. So... In resolving the size of the land and what is left, because don't forget, you already, you already told us that in the EI, the point three 
aims at protecting what is left. So what is left must be substantial and must be important to you, which is why you stated that in a press conference that you did not want to get anybody to just start developing. You, you, are, you are going to make sure that whatever development happens does not affect the ecological integrity of the forest, which means that the forest that remains is very important to you. Extremely important to me and extremely important to the president and the government. And as I said to you, all the work that was done, the conclusions which were reached was that the forest was substantially protected. You seem to think otherwise. Let, let's continue to have the conversation and interrogate the issues. No, no, I don't and think otherwise. I was just asking questions around what was well, given Bebo, and what was left. I don't think, I, I don't have any pre, pre, I don't have any preconceived no, 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 notion. No, Bernard, no, that is perfectly not that. That's what you should do. Your work is to raise the issues, is to interrogate the issues, which is exactly what you are doing. And I'm saying to you that everything that was done was done fully above board, was done transparently, was done by Ghanaian experts, Ghanaian technical people, and they came to conclusions which they think are justifiable. If your uh, uh, examination reveals otherwise, we'll take a look at it. But for, for the time being, I, I, I don't um, have any reason to think okay. otherwise, that what they did was wrong. Just finally, we've, we've been to... We've been to we've been, there is finally. No, finally. We've been to France. We've spoken about COP26. We've had discussions about climate change. And you've yes. attended some of these conferences and you've assured... Even the day I interviewed you with Stoneboy, you, you spoke about the integrity of our environmental issues. I'm going to the question of the, you, the, the giving of land as compensation in lieu of the current global climate and environmental realities. To what extent were they factored in? Because you told me that there were lawyers involved, the AGs involved, but your ministry is the lead ministry when it comes to some of the issues around sustainability and environment for us as a country. To what extent were those issues factored in this compensation of land, the size given, and how sure are you that your, the credentials of Ghana in relation to its environmental preservation are still intact after this particular EI and what it means? They were all factored in, and, and the reputation of Ghana should be intact. There should be no compromise whatsoever to the preservation of Ghana. The Achimota Forest as it stands today, um, the, if you want, let's take a, a little trip there. You will find that the forest is literally degraded, and what is left of it is just shrubs, neem trees, little neem trees here and there. It's President Akufuado who has voted money, and it's this ministry which has gone around and looked for money and began reforesting the Achimota forest. We planted a good number of trees there now, and the intention is to plant a lot more trees in the Achimota forest moving forward so that it become a forest properly so-called, which is fit for purpose, which will be said to be a forest, not mm. literally land, land with shrubs and, and grass. Well, so, we are, we, <laughs> no, let me finish. Let me finish. Mm. so we are on with, with that program uh, of reforesting the Achimota forest, and we're going mm. to ramp it up and make sure that it becomes a true forest. But the Mohammed government had a plan of mm. turning it to an ecotourism, ecotourism park. They even signed an agreement with a company called Aikens Capital, where they were going to come and build an ecotourism park. I'm still not persuaded by it. I mean, we've had a series of meetings with them because I seem to think that that one will, will just lead us into some sort of a theme park. And that will mm. more or less compromise the ecological, uh, ecological integrity of the forest is there. Our thinking is mm. to develop it to the likes of Hyde Park of London or Central Park of New York, where it is properly forested, thick forest, mm. with just pathways where people can run and benches where people can sit mm. in. And the least we may permit there will be water or coffee or something of that sort. So, Bernard, on the contrary, we are rather working to protect the Achimota Forest and to actually develop the Achimota Forest and mm. make it a truly, a true well, forest I, I, we, we, we for, for we, the capital city of Accra. So, so this, is, this, is, uh, this, for me, doesn't derogate from our standing at all. On the contrary, what we are doing with the Chimota Forest and all mm. the other interventions, including having added more hectares to our forest cover, more than all the governments from independence put together. President Kufuado mm. from 2017 has added more hectares to our forest cover than all governments put together since 1957. I can give you the figures. So we are rather committed mm. to preserving the forest okay. cover of our country. Thank, thank you. I'll be happy if, after this conversation, you are able to, based on your conversation with the technical people, provide information or clarify this 40% claim I'm making because it's very important to us that 146 out of 363 no, hectares is very out. substantial and it is not empty land. It is up to 
1,800 feet into. If you look at the demarcation you gave in the site plan, this is substantial forest. So if you, yes, we support tree planting, but we do not believe that you need to remove trees and then plant more in a, in a bit to compensate somebody. So please, if the technical people agree to give us those maps, it will be very useful for us to share with our viewers and our listeners to assure them that pristine forest is not going to be destroyed in the name of compensating a family. I appreciate your legitimate concern. So we'll take a look at all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Samuel Jinapo is the Minister for Land. We'll take a short break. Uh, it was a... Uh, it was a... Uh,